This wheel has been driving for over a week, 24 hours a day without stopping. It is using a NEMA 23 motor and this 3D printed gearbox. This type of gearbox is what's called an RV reducer. You can tell it's an RV reducer because of the way that it is. How neat is that? The RV stands for radial vector, and there's actually not a ton of information about these online, besides a few research papers. But basically, it seems like it's a cycloidal and a planetary gearbox smashed together. Now, I don't know about you guys, but reading papers makes my brain hurt. What the? What does that even mean? So I just hopped into Fusion 360 and started designing my own. Okay, today I'm gonna to show you how I designed this gearbox. First step, we make a circle. Then we extrude that circle. And now as you can see, we have a gearbox. The concept of a cycloidal gearbox is pretty simple and has been done a lot on YouTube. James Bruton used them for the joints in his dog robot, and Daniel over at RC Test Flight even used them on one of his rovers. However, in all the examples I've seen, they use a standard cycloidal gearbox, which uses a single eccentric cam to move a cycloidal disc, and then an output hub with rollers and bearings and spacers to transfer all the movement. However, with the gearbox I'm building, there's actually three eccentric cams, which are all tied together using helical spur gears. This reduces the load that each cam sees and will hopefully extend the life of the gearbox. In this design, the cycloidal discs don't even rotate. They just kind of sit there and jiggle. However, they jiggle in just the right way, which makes the output hub so excited, it has no choice but to start spinning. Now I'm told that gearboxes are supposed to spin, so this is good. It also means there's way less moving parts than a traditional cycloidal drive. And, this will be our little secret, but you can get an extra reduction if you use a small sun gear to achieve a planetary reduction. All right, so let's actually build this thing. I printed the eccentric cam from resin because you can get some pretty crazy tight tolerances with it. This is using the Soraya Tech nylon black resin, which is absolutely my favorite resin at this point. This stuff is awesome. I then FDM printed some pieces for the housing out of PLA+. From here I can start assembling things. To mount everything together, I'm using bolts that go into heat stake inserts. This is an easy and hopefully reliable way to make sure I can assemble and disassemble this thing multiple times. As with most cycloidal drives, this thing uses a ton of bearings, but I tried to use ones that are cheap and standard sizes. As always, I will put a hardware list in the description of this video, as well as a link where you can find the CAD files and the STL files for free. To make the cycloidal disc, I wanted to test out my new laser cutter with acrylic. This ended up working really well, and it made some nice, smooth cuts. But you know what also works really well? The sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. Nord offers an easy-to-use VPN that only requires one click to connect, or can even connect automatically. They have tons of servers in countries all over the world, and you can connect to them to access any of your favorite content online. All your data is encrypted, so internet service providers can't throttle your streaming speeds or sell your data. Now, prior to this, I've never really used a VPN. So before agreeing to do this ad, I actually purchased NordVPN and tested it out. Connecting to the Nord servers is actually very fast, and I had no problem streaming content while connected. Since NordVPN has servers all over the world, it can allow you to access geo-locked content. That means you might be able to find shows and other content that wasn't previously available in your region. At just a couple bucks a month, you can start your protected browsing today. Click the link in the description below or visit NordVPN slash Michael Recton to get an exclusive deal. And if you're unhappy with the service for any reason, there's a 30 day money back guarantee. Now let's get back to the video. These discs we just laser cut can now get added to the gearbox. After adding just one disc, you can see that now all the eccentric cams are essentially linked together. To add a second cycloidal disc, another set of bearings is installed, and then some caps go on top which form the second half of the eccentric cam and are held together with bolts. Okay, so let's talk motors. I'm using a NEMA 23 stepper motor, which is sort of the big brother to the NEMA 17 motor that's on a lot of 3D printers. A helical spur gear is slid onto the shaft, which will interface with the gears on the eccentric cams. The motor is then mounted using those heat stake inserts we installed earlier. Everything then gets held together with this faceplate and some bolts that go all the way through the assembly. 
So although the mechanics of this gearbox are sort of weird, it's actually pretty straightforward to design and assemble. Wiring everything up shows that this thing actually moves. Now to see if this thing can actually move anything, I printed this outer hub. I tried to stop this thing from turning using just my hand, and it actually has a lot of torque. Now I know what you're saying, Michael, I don't have a laser cutter or a resin printer, now I can't make this. Stop. This thing can very easily be printed entirely on an FDM printer. To prove this, I went ahead and printed the entire thing out of PLA. I was doing this on the Neptune 3 Pro printer that Elgu sent over. I don't really do full review videos, but this thing works pretty well, so check it out if you're interested. And guess what? After I assemble everything with PLA parts, it still works just fine. Now you may have noticed, this one actually looks a bit different. That is because I covered up the exposed gears and added some mounting points so we can test how tough this gearbox really is. For testing, I'm going to put this thing outside and just make it drive in circles until something breaks. I replaced the old output hub with this one that looks much cooler, and then I 3D printed this giant tire out of PLA. This thing is huge. I think it's about the max diameter that this printer could fit. Oh my god, this thing is massive. Doing a quick spin check showed the gearbox is still good to go, so we should be ready to start testing. So I didn't really show building the test setup, but basically I used this aluminum extrusion arm attached to a post with a slip ring, which will provide power to the motor. I then powered everything with the power supply that was inside and just used a wire routed through the window. Without further ado, I think we're ready to turn the power supply on and get this test started. Conveniently, it started snowing the same afternoon I started this test. Thanks, Ohio. Very cool. Over the past few weeks, we've had a lot of cold nights, and for about a five-day stretch, it didn't get above freezing. And we've also had rain and snow in that time, and this thing's kept on driving through all of that. I didn't really anticipate this test going this long, but at this point, this gearbox has been driving for two weeks nonstop. Based on the speed that it's driving, that means it's traveled roughly 35 miles in that time frame. That's pretty crazy. It is worth noting that before I started the test, I put some gel lubricant into the gearbox to hopefully make it last longer, but I haven't touched it since, so I'm very interested to see how much wear and tear has gone on inside the gearbox. All right, so it's been two weeks. I stopped it. Uh, let's take it apart and see how much wear and tear there's been. Huh, like brand new. All right, let me take this inside real quick. So looking closer at this gearbox shows that there's actually very little signs of wear. The cycloidal disc, the helical spur gears, and the output hub all look like they're basically brand new. Now I realized that there wasn't exactly a ton of resistance to this thing turning, so it wasn't a ton of load on the gearbox and it was operating nowhere near its max torque. However, in order to drive that 35 miles, the motor had to turn over 3 million times. That's a lot for a spur gear that's just 3D printed. Either way, I'm very happy with how this testing went, and I'm already trying to think about other ways I can test this gearbox in the future. So let me know if you guys have any ideas, and as always, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the new projects, and I'll see you in the next one.